Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question Pascal's triangle 2. So in this question, we're going to be given a non-negative index. So let's say we're given the index 0. So we need to return whatever is at the 0th row of a Pascal's triangle. So in this case, we'd return the number 1. Let's say we're given the number 3. So we'd return the third row. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So we'd return 1, 3, 3, 1. So you can look at this example here. Input 3, output 1, 3, 3, 1. So this question is very math based and in order to get the most optimal solution, we need to understand the formula behind it. So let's take a look at what that actually is. Alright, so let's just take a quick look at what a Pascal's triangle actually is. So this is what it looks like and in the beginning, so this is going to be our 0th row. So this is going to be our 0th row and the, so this is going to be our first row. And if you notice, the first elements of each row, no matter what, are always going to be 1 and the last elements are also always going to be 1. Okay, so now once you go to our second row, we have 1, 2 and 1. So how do we get that? So the first one is always going to be 1. The last is also going to be 1. And for the 1 over here, we add the, this element here and this element here. So we add 1 plus 1 and we get the number 2. So let's look at our third row real quick. So the first is 1, the last one is 1. And how do we get the number 3? And that's nothing else but adding this over here and this over here. So 1 plus 2 equals 3. And for this 3, we add this 2 and we add this 1. So we, again, we get 1 plus 2, 3. So that's how a Pascal's triangle looks, looks like. And what is the purpose of a Pascal's triangle? And the answer is, you use a Pascal's triangle in order to perform binary expansion. These are going to be the coefficients. And if you know how binary uh, expansion works, this can also be represented using the NCR format. So you might have seen it been written like this, or some people write it like this, or sometimes usually it's written like this. So you have N over here and you have R over here. So let's just look at what does this actually mean and how can and how does this correspond to our Pascal's triangle? So let's just look at how do people represent the NCR format. So on top you have the N value and over here you write the R value, okay? And the formula for this is, so we're going to first find N factorial. So all N factorial is, we're going to do N multiplied by N minus 1, multiplied by N minus 2, and so on and so forth. And we're going to divide that by R factorial, right? Multiplied by N minus R factorial. So this over here is the formula for calculating NCR. So let's just take a quick look at it. So let's say you have this value over here, 2C0. So I'm just going to write this over here. So we have 2C0. And let's just plug it into our formula. So you have 2 factorial divided by 0 factorial multiplied by 2 minus 0 factorial. So how does this look like? So 2 factorial is 2 multiplied by 1. 0 factorial has a value of 1. And we're going to multiply that by 2 factorial, which is again 2 multiplied by 1. And in other words, this is just 2 divided by 2. So 2 by 2, which equals to 1. So over here, you can notice that everything on the left, so NCR, where R has a value of 0, is always going to equal to the value of 1. So that also makes sense if you look at this, everything on the left is 1. Over here as well, everything is 1. Now similarly, on the right hand side, when you have NCR and the N value is equal to the R value, in that case, you also get a value of 1. So similarly, all of these values are 1. So now that you understand the concept, I'm sure you might be thinking that we're going to be using that to solve our question and we could. So we could first do n of 4c0, 4c1, 4c2 and so on and so forth. But the problem is that we need to do so, uh, a lot of computations at the same time and that's actually going to be, uh, it's going to take up a lot of time. So a lot easier and better solution is we're going to use the ncr minus 1's value, use that value in order to find the value of ncr. So what I mean by that, in other words, is to find, let's say, 4c1, we're going to be using the value of 4c0. And this is actually a better solution because we know that in the beginning, our value is always going to be 1. So we can use that in order to find the next element. So what we need to do in order to be able to do that, 
we need to find some sort of relationship between ncr and ncr minus 1. So the current element and the previous element. And in order to find the relationship, what we're going to do is we're going to take ncr and divide that by ncr minus 1. So I'm just going to show you the proof of this real quickly. So uh, over here, I'm going to have ncr and I'll just write it. So n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial. Simple. And then we have ncr minus 1. And to write that, we're going to have n factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial and multiplied by n minus r minus 1. So uh, make sure, look how I'm writing it in brackets, is because when you simplify this, it's going to actually end up being n minus r plus 1 factorial. I was making this mistake earlier, so yeah, make sure of that. Okay, so now we have this, and now we're going to divide them. So when you're dividing them, it's just the same as taking ncr and multiplying it with the inverse of this. If you don't know what inverse is, all it is, you take the numerator and put it in the denominator. Take the denominator and put it in the numerator. Pretty simple. So I'm just going to write this real quick and show you how it looks like. Okay, so we have this over here. So this is going to be our division. So let's try to simplify it as much as possible. The first thing right off the back, we have n factorial over here and we have n factorial here. So we can cross that off. Now we can actually simplify it furthermore. Let's just go uh, element by element. So over here we have r factorial. r factorial, I'm just going to cross it off for now. It can also be written as r multiplied by r minus 1 factorial. Pretty simple. And if you notice over here, let's just go to this equation. We already have r minus 1 factorial. So we're going to cross this off. And we're also going to cross out the r minus 1 factorial here. So, so far, we're left out with r. And similarly, now what we're going to do is we're going to try to break this part down furthermore. So because of lack of space, I'm going to be writing this over here. I know it's a little bit confusing, but yeah, sorry. So this is the same as writing n minus r plus 1 multiplied by n minus r plus 1 minus 1, right? So n minus r plus 1 minus 1 is the same as n minus r. So n minus r factorial. Again, this is the numerator. I'm not writing it because of lack of space. So now let's just cross it out furthermore. So over here, we have n minus r factorial. We can cross that out. And over here in the numerator, we also have n minus r factorial. So this over here is our simplified version. Let me just write it so that it looks a lot easier to understand. So after doing our formula or proof, this is what we end up with. ncr divided by ncr minus 1 is equal to n minus r plus 1 divided by r. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to rearrange our equation a bit. So in other words, we're going to have ncr is equal to ncr minus 1. So this is the value of the previous element multiplied by n minus r plus 1 by r. So this is the formula that we're going to be using. And if you want to see how it works, just put it into one of these numbers over here and you can test it out for yourself and it should work. So this is the formula we're going to be using. So just take a quick look at it. And now we're going to implement it in code. So again, uh, if you don't understand anything, ask me down in the comments because uh, I truly believe that once you understand the theory part of this, the uh, code itself is the easy part. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by calling a variable called row. And this is what is going to hold all of the items of our row. And we're going to start off by giving it our very first value. And we know that no matter what row we are at, the first value is going to be 1. So we're going to start off with giving it the value 1. So now we're going to iterate through the values. And we're going to start off with the value 1. And we're going to go all the way up to the ending. So row index plus 1. And the reason we're doing plus 1 here is because by just doing row index, we're going to go up to row index. But when we do row index plus 1, we're going to include that row index. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to find out the value of element x. So in this case, we already have the 0th element. So let's find what the value of the first element is going to be. So I'll try to put up the function over here somewhere. And we're just going to follow the function. So first, we want to give it the value of ncr minus 1, right? So we want to give it the value of ncr minus 1, so the previous element. And that's always going to be, so that value is going to be rho x minus 1. So in the beginning, for the first index, we're going to go to 1 minus 1, which is the 0th index. So this is going to be the value of ncr minus 1. And now we're going to multiply it with the value that we had before. 
which is our, we're going to multiply with the value of n minus the current index we're on plus one. So in this case, the n is going to be row index, right? Minus x, which we get from over here, and plus one since such is part of the function. And after we do that, uh, we're going to divide it with the value of x. So we're going to do integer division divided by x. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add this to our row. So we're going to append this to our row. And that should be it. So we're going to go through this function. And at the ending of it, we're going to return our row. And let's see if this works. So submit. And as you can see, our solution did get accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have any questions. And I think this is the most optimum solution, but let me know if you have a better solution. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know what you thought about the video. Thank you.